So is it morning? Yes, it is. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, um, uh, sadly, internet had problem. And we, I could not actually broadcast the first session that I was having with the other section of OOP244. So um, how many of you actually saw the video, watched the video? Don't be shy. You can do the thing. Do like that so I can see. Okay, so not much. So I have to quickly go through everything. Um, so my name is Fardad, F-A-R-D-A-D. -A -D. Last name, don't bother. Just know the spelling. You don't need to uh, actually call me with my last name. I, I have difficulty pronouncing it. So um, um, I teach... Uh, uh, Core programming courses, C, C++, stuff like that. Um, um, uh, we are going to um, uh, go through object orientation this semester. It's essentially the same language that you had before, C language, but with a twist. Okay? Um, what is plus plus in, in C? What does plus plus do in C? Yes, it means it's C, but with additional features. Thank you. No, what is, so, thank you for the interpretation. But plus plus essentially means, in C means? Uh, increment. Plus one. OK, now we can give it to the next person. See? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it means plus one. So C plus plus is essentially C with object orientation. One thing is added to it. So the language is the same. Everything's identical. Uh, they, it works perfectly. Um, like the thing, the knowledge that you have is not uh, uh, gone waste. It's the, you're literally using everything. So, and that's why we're going to have a little quiz today. So, you're going to have around 20, 25 minute quiz today. It's not a quiz. It's not going to be. Its mark is not going to affect your overall mark at all. Okay, it's just an assessment for me and you. Okay, uh, the reason that I'm doing this is that uh, I'm facing uh, some kind of a trend uh, and a pandemic. Not COVID, but something else. That is, uh, at the end of the semester, I see students come to me and say that uh, um, I'm going to fail this subject, or if I fail, my world's going to end, and uh, uh, tuition is like this. And, like that. and I hate it that I hear that at the end of the semester. OK? If you have any problem with anything that you have, you come to me now. At the end of the semester, I can't do anything. Of course, if you got 49%, you had 49% weighted average of your tests, and you have an average of 60% in a test, and you tell me, hey, far that I failed because of 1%, we can do something about it. I understand that. That's something valid to talk about. But it's not a farmer's market. We cannot bargain for marks if you haven't done anything throughout the semester. No matter how much you paid for your tuition, no matter how, many, how much problem you have, if you haven't done anything, you didn't do any workshops, all your quizzes are 5 10%, the overall average of the whole subject is 20%, and you come and tell me, I have to pass this subject. I can't, because I'm going to go under question. My career is going to be in jeopardy, because they're going to fire me, telling me, why did you pass this person with 20% average? I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm just stating the facts. So. If you have any problem, if you see there are things that uh, it's hard to follow and it's difficult to do, or you see you are falling behind, immediately talk to me, okay? Let me know. I'll set up appointments. We'll get together. I'll tutor you personally, one-to-one, -one, and try to help you catch up. Only if you come to me early enough so we have time. That cannot be done a week before final. So please, be, I, I want to be completely clear about it. And another thing, if you are studying, and I have a way of knowing, we'll, we'll see, I'll tell you exactly how the system works, like the way we work together, you will see everything is transparent. You know what I do, I know exactly what you are doing. So if I see you are studying hard and still you are not getting there and you are struggling every time and things like that, that's absolutely respect, respectable for me. It's amazing thing. Those are the people who get hired at Google. Those people who are genius are at the side, other side of the spectrum. They are different. 
Dumb people, genius people are identical, just opposite sides. They didn't try hard. Their brain is wired in a way that they process things the way we don't. I had to go over things six times to understand. I had a friend that would just glance at a book and it would get it. Okay? So don't compare yourself with those people. Those people who work hard, that counts. If I see you are working every day, bugging me every day, booking appointments, trying to learn stuff, and you still get 40% throughout the semester, that's a pass for me but I need to see you are working. And I cannot tell you how disappointed I'm going to be if I see anybody plagiarizes anything. And I am extremely against that. I actually open it up, which means in my class, you can plagiarize as long as you cite it. That's not plagiarism anymore. That's how everything works in science. You don't start everything from scratch. You have to submit your project in two days and you're stuck. This part of the code doesn't work. You ask Jane to give you the code. You get the code, you put it in your project, everything works, you cite. You tell me this part of the project was done by Jane and I borrowed the code. Perfect. You lose 3%, 5%, that piece of code that you borrowed, you lose the mark for that, you get 95% instead of 100. Everybody's happy, I'll thank Jane, I'll thank you. But if I get the code that Jane has in yours, and neither of you told me, you both get zero. And I'm not joking about that. And I immediately report it. So, you are in distress, and you want, you need help, you can borrow pieces of code. You will cite it, and you're just fine. All right? As long as you cannot say, this is the entire project is written by Jack. And I bought that. That can't be done. You understand what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying, the parts that are troublesome. Anyways, together, if we work, I'm not saying hard, normally. Like half an hour a day studying, an hour a day studying. That's not too much, is it? Okay? You do that, believe me, you're going to pass with an A. Okay? But if you do it constantly, you cannot say, I am, I'm not going to study anything. In weekend, I'm going to study seven hours. That's not going to work out. Curve of forgetting. Google it and see what it is. Our brain is wired like this, where for an hour lecture, when you have done the lecture, the day of the lecture or the next day, you need to review it for an hour. You need to review it for 20 minutes. Then after a week, you have to review it for 10 minutes. After a month, you have to review it for five minutes. It's committed to your long-term memory. If you have an hour lecture today, you study it a week from now, it's all gone. There is nothing to review anymore. That's proven fact for a normal brain, for your brain and my brain. That's how it works, okay? So please, we did all the nagging and all the thing. Now we can start. Are we okay with this? Before we begin, because I have to be quick today, uh, any questions, any concerns? Did you read? Uh, how many of you actually read the addendum or, or the, 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 the thing? Two people, three people. Holy moly. Okay, so you have to be more attentive than this, my friends. Uh, so what, what we have essentially in, uh, I'm just going to quickly go through it and explain everything. So. Um, in your, uh, in your uh, uh, what shall I call it, the um, uh, courses, if you log into your course, so to OP244ZAA, um, uh, we have, uh, if you go to the course information over here, there is an addendum that you can go through. The addendum tells you everything about the subject, what it is and what we are going to do. So read that carefully and go through it and try to exactly understand what it says. I'm just going to go through it very quickly. So you know what the course code and all the stuff. I'm not going to go through that. That's silly. Um, uh, one important thing, you see that I record the sessions. That is no way guaranteed. I have been doing this for 15 years. So I just do it for students to be able to review for a part. Oh, I didn't get that part. Let me get that part again. Don't think that he's recording. I'm not going to go to class. I'm going to watch it tomorrow. 
that's not going to happen. Very possible that I'm going to post the recording five days later. There is no guarantee. This is not something out of the course. It's nowhere in addenda it tells you that this, the sessions are recorded. This is an in-person class and you should attend the class. This recording is just a bonus. Okay? And microphone fails. Recording goes bad. Things like that happen. You should be here and use this as review, please. Okay? I'll, I'm not a, this serious all the time, and you don't see my face angry like this all the time. I'm a laughing person. I'm a clown in the class. I'll try to make everything fun and nice. I'll try. I promise I'll try to do that, but, but, but please, let's do it together, okay? So, uh, the phone number that you see over here actually rings Microsoft Teams, okay? So, it actually makes my computer ring, okay? Uh, so if you don't have access to Microsoft Teams and you need to call me or talk to me, you dial that number, it comes to my computer, and if I'm available, I answer. It's the exact same thing with Microsoft Teams. Everybody must install Microsoft Teams app. Don't use the web version. That doesn't work because the web version doesn't allow controlling the screen, okay? So use the application and not the web version, please, okay? Um, uh, I do not announce office hours because it doesn't make sense. I can tell you two hours a week, this time to this time. 70% of you will have class at that time and you won't be able to keep in contact with me, okay? So because of that, I made the office hours by appointment. My schedule on Microsoft Teams is updated all the time. So every time I do something, I put it in Microsoft Teams. What you do is that when you load Microsoft Teams, you actually can book an appointment with me using what is called scheduling assistant, okay? So when you click on new meeting, it's, it's while well, it's running, I'm gonna tell you. So as you see, these are the teams, and now you are a member of this, by the way. I already added you to the team and AA and ZAA, and that's where all the communication and help and stuff goes through. So when you look at this, these are all the things that you see. I see it. I'm saying uh, information and all the videos and practice tests that I put over there. Practice test is posted. Uh, probably 90% of you didn't see because it was posted when? 11 o'clock last night. So, so I understand if you didn't do it, uh, we'll do it together. We'll, so you'll see exactly how things work. Uh, uh, everybody make sure you log into your uh, uh, um, uh, lab computers too, okay? That's very important. Uh, just, just while you're listening, do it. We're not going to do anything on it right now, but when you are doing that quiz thingy, it has to be on lab computers. You cannot do it on your own computer. And there is another thing, another uh, study, another fact. Our brain if your brain is wired normally, you're not a genius, we have one language processor in here. One, not two. We have one receptor in here that gets information in and out. All these beautiful laptops that you have are nothing but distraction. They don't help you at all. The only thing they do, they distract you from what I'm saying and you'll miss what I'm gonna say. Your choice to use it, I'm not gonna mention not use it or use it if you want to take notes. The best thing is a notebook and a pencil because that's analog. To write something, you have to translate my words into action. That commits it to your memory. This doesn't do jack, okay? So putting it on, I know everybody's going, oh, come on, another, you know, dinosaur. And we are, I am extremely tech savvy, I'm telling you, okay? So that doesn't work. It's a proven fact. It just distracts you. But if you are, I see all the eyes are rolling in. Uh, if you, I'm not saying not to use your MacBooks and uh, surfaces and things like that. Do whatever you want to do. It's I'm just stating the fact. All right? Uh, and many people actually uh, um, uh, maybe are good with that. But uh, that's, that's, that's a fact. Okay? There's nothing that, I, uh, that I'm uh, making up. It's a study. It's done. Everybody knows. Uh, and you don't need to take any notes of the things that I write. And I, that's the way I teach. I open up Visual Studio, I program, and I teach. 
I make mistakes, you'll see the mistakes happening, we'll try to fix the mistakes together. So when you make that mistake, you know what happened, okay? So that's, that's how I do it. Anything that I do as soon as the class is over, or maybe two, three hours later, goes up go in, into GitHub. So like the other day that we actually, uh, if you actually go to this thing, um, go to, uh, uh, let me just uh, go through this first. Um, I'm not gonna jump around. Uh, uh, you gotta see that everything goes directly on GitHub with uh, uh, amazing features that I'm gonna talk about very quickly. So again, by appointment, you can book an appointment uh, using Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Teams, I'm gonna quickly show you how it works. So if you want to actually book an appointment, you go to calendar, you click on calendar. Um, so this is my schedule as I have it right now. And if like you like, if, if you want to book an appointment, you click on new meeting. And as soon as you do that, scheduling assistant comes up. You see that? This thing up here. You click on that. You add my name. Your name is there. You find common times. And you see when I'm free. It tells you when I'm available, when I'm not. You book an appointment with me. Try to make it 30 minutes for now. Okay? Maximum 30 minutes. It's by default, I think it comes up to 30 minutes. Book 30 minutes appointments, not like an hour and a half appointment. That can't happen, okay? Uh, 30 minute appointments, and we'll go through things. If it needs more time, we'll take that time, okay? Uh, like that, I'll see the appointment. And if you need to talk to me, <laughs> don't book an appointment three minutes from now. I don't have time to see it. Usually try to take and get the appointment a day earlier, uh, a day and a half earlier, or maybe two days earlier, so I have time to see it. Um, Otherwise, if it's 11 o'clock at night and you book an appointment at 9 o'clock and I start working at 8.30, for example, it's very possible that I don't even see that appointment, okay? Give me some time to see it. Um, I'm not one of those people who have has his cell phone set up and everything, everything dings and dongs when something happens. I, if I do that, I'll, I'm going to be living my life with dings and dongs and I don't want to do that, okay? So that's that. So booking appointments we know. Um, um, any help, any, qu any, any help that you see that you have, you can simply post it here. Hey guys, and mention over here, I have a problem. This is, everybody sees this, right? You just post a question over here. Please don't post the whole solution of something, right? You know what I mean? Like if you have a problem, you have a piece of code that doesn't work, just put that piece of code and tell everyone, this, this piece of code, this function is work, not working. Can anybody help me with this? Either me or any other student, you can contribute. That's amazing. Teach each other, okay? Help each other. And if you can do that, you're going to learn. The best way to learn is to teach, okay? Uh, help, help each other, and if I grab the question, I'll grab the question, or you can book an appointment. So this is like a discussion forum. And also, I put announcements over here so you can see it. That's that. You see I have a chat over here, so somebody said something. That's a beautiful thing. So I can actually click over there and actually talk only to people on teams who have uh, urgent work with me. If you send me an email, I'm going to answer it when you graduate, probably, okay? Emails are very slow. And if I show you my mailbox, you're going to get scared. Like I have like 3,000 emails coming every day. Okay? Don't do that. Use emails for logs and stuff. I don't know. If you want to send me something that tell me, oh, see, I just put, sent this thing to you for, so you know, at 12 o'clock I mentioned you this. Fine. But sending messages, private messages over here are the best. Send private messages, then we have a history of our conversation over there so I can go back. Another thing. I have two sections. When you are doing something, it would be nice if at the beginning of your note, write something like ZAA, so I immediately know which section you're in so I can go find your records. If you do that, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, I have to look and see which section you belong to, and that's kind of a pain, but it's okay. And respect the dot. Okay, you see that dot over there? If it's green or yellow, you can call me. Don't send me a message. Please don't send me a message. Can I call? No, you don't need to ask. If that's green or yellow, which means I'm either available or I'm away, but my computer is on. If you call me, it does a ding dang thingy, and if I get to it, fine. If I don't get to it, I see I have a missed call. Or if I'm busy, I simply pick up and say, hey, I'm busy right now, we can talk later. 
Okay, get ready for that. But if that is green or yellow, just call me. Don't ask me, may I call now? Yes, you can call. I'm telling you right now. Okay, but if it's red or uh, offline or something like that, then please don't call. You're going to wake up my 10 year old and I'll really get pissed. Okay, so that's that. Uh, respect the dot. Workshops, 20%. Final project, 20%. Quizzes, 15%. Test one, 15%. Test two, 30%. The weighted average of test one and test two and the project are the most important things to pass this subject, which means test one multiply by 33.33333 plus test two multiply by 66.66666. That tells you what is the weighted average of your two tests. If it's below 50, bye-bye. If it's above 50, you're good with tests. Project, you have total of five milestones. Four, first four milestones are the engine that you are designing. So you're going to do these first four milestones. The first four milestones, have, they have very loose due date, which means I'll give you an ideal due date, and even if you are one week late, you still get the full mark for it. They are not scrutinized. I'm not going to look at your code. Only the timely submission of them counts. But you can always ask for a code review. You can tell me, Farhad, I submitted my milestone three. Can you take a look at it? And we go through the code and see if I do yada, yada, yada. Then we'll go through it. It is physically impossible for me to go through 100 students' work one by one and see what is wrong or right. I can't do that. It's physically impossible. Okay? So if you need advice, ask for it. I'll go through it. But milestone five, that is the application itself, that is build up on those four, that's going to be scrutinized. So if you want to actually update anything of milestone one, two, three, four, you can always do it. You finish milestone one, when you're doing milestone two, you say, oops, milestone one didn't have that one. You can update it. And you can keep doing that by milestone five. That's the definition of software development. Okay. If the four milestones must be submitted, even if the mark that you receive is zero, that's one condition for the project to be markable. Then milestone five, it has few features, six features. Each feature has a separate submission, so it makes the submission easy. So it becomes only four or five lines of submission. You don't have to enter 50 lines of thing over there, okay? In six steps, those four milestones and one of the submissions of milestone five makes your workshop uh, your project markable, which means minimum of 50%. Each submission has 10%. Okay? So, uh, for the project to be called completed, it's not, obviously it's not complete if you only submit two of the six, but it's markable, which means you submitted four milestones and two of those you'll mark as 60%. You're good. Okay? So these are the two key features of passing the subject. If you don't submit your final project and your average, total average, is higher than 50% in the subject, then you get an incomplete, which means I'm going to tell you you have to submit your project by this time next semester, and you will get a minimum passing grade. Because whatever you have, like if you have 60% and you, you submit your project, you get 60%. Okay, that project doesn't get any marks, you just submitted it. Okay, but if your project is not submitted and your average is below 50, then it's a fail. So be careful. Okay, so these are the two key things. And the other uh, thing is that the whole thing should be ab uh, above 50%, obviously. Okay, that's that. The, all the timelines are here, but this is redundant. You don't need to see those. All you need to do for your Timeline is to actually go to, is to go to weekly schedule. So the weekly schedule over here has all the things that you want, all the stuff that you have, and uh, link to the things you're supposed to study. So OOP, that's what you were studying today. Okay, we are talking about today. Uh, these are the, so, and it, and it takes you to this, uh, 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 um, site that has the notes, uh, essentially the text for the book. So everything's here. You know exactly what's going to be referred to. Uh, we have two sessions, lab and uh, two different things, lab and lecture. Uh, like today, 
if the lecture is not completed for any reason, I use the lab to do it. Lab, I don't know what was it in IPC 144, in OP244, lab is not a place to start your lab. When your workshop comes up, you start it immediately until you come to lab, bringing your problems to lab. And, I, and we'll talk about it, okay? So that's how it is. We don't start your workshop in the lab, okay? So, workshops, two different ones. Before the midterm, you have two workshops per week. The first workshop, we call it lab, which is the one that I talked about, okay? The second one is a homework. The one that is the lab, uh, you start at home and start working with it. It's, it's very heavily guided, so ideally following the instructions, you'll be able to do it on your own. If there is any problem, we fix it in a lab, and it's usually due a day after the lab. So when you, uh, you start three, four days before, you do it, you come to lab, you uh, uh, check it out. And we, if, if anything's wrong with it, I'll help you. And then uh, you have another day to fix all the things you're supposed to fix, and you submit it, and that's the lab part, okay? Uh, that, that lab thingy, again, it's exactly like the milestones. I'm not going to scrutinize it. It's just time. If you give it to me on time, uh, you, it, on the day, you get full mark. If you give it to me the next day, you get only 40% of the mark. If you give it to me two days late, it gets zero. As easy as that, okay? Uh, the other one that is DIY, do it yourself, it's using the concepts of the lab but it's uh, in smaller scope and very open-ended. You can do it any way you want. Uh, and it's going to be due four days after the lab. So you have four days to work on it. And it uses everything that you have. So uh, that, that essentially tries to force you to use the curve of forgetting, which means I teach, you do, and then a week later you do again, and a month later you do again. And that uh, makes everything hopefully quizzes we have every week, you know that. Uh, and But second half of the semester, you only have the lab. You don't have the DIY. Why? Because the project kicks in. You have the project. You don't have time to do the workshop and a project. That's like just too much, right? So you only do the lab, uh, the, the guided one, and project is something that you're going to live with, which means it starts approximately either study break or a week before study break, we publish it. And, and you have, but the due dates of those are not matched with the week. One milestone may have two days, another milestone may have 14 days. It depends on how, uh, how much coding you need for each one of them, okay? And that's uh, how the uh, project is done. Uh, weekly schedule is over there. Uh, and my weekly schedule here, again, is redundant, so it takes you actually to the GitHub the place that I told you. So if you actually go to GitHub, in GitHub you will see there is a repository called OP244NAANZAA Notes. Everything and anything I do in class is here, including the recordings of the sessions. So if you go to, for example, ZAA session, here you're going to see your notes, and down here you see it says to be posted. It's going to be the recordings of the sessions coming up. I strongly suggest if you have time, speed up, like go to YouTube and speed up the thing to like 2x so it goes twice as fast and just listen to the recording of the other session too in case I mentioned something over there I didn't mention. Why? Because uh, I use you when I actually want to teach, which means different classes based on that talking stick and the questions that goes back and forth may cover things that the other one didn't. Okay, it is a college. It's not high school or primary school that I teach you everything. I'll start up for you. You have to go and study it yourself from the notes. That's that one. What else we need to cover in here very quickly? So I'm going to talk about all these things and you'll see it. Uh, so that was the weekly schedule. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And quizzes are all here, practice tests, uh, uh, you don't need to do it because you're going to do the quiz, I'll explain to you how to do it, but um, if you want to do the practice, uh, practice test, I'll, I'll take you through it. So everybody's logged into uh, these things, right? You're not? Bad boy, you are. Log in. 
Log, everybody log in. And, uh, I'm not going to do it now, Bob, please, yes, thank you. Bob, uh, please log into your, and let, let them be logged in while you're listening to me, okay? So, so when I tell you start, you can start. Yes, sir. Uh, that's weekly schedule. That's your weekly schedule. Go back. Okay. Come down. Oh. It's hidden? You, did I? Is it hidden from students? Give me a second. Oh, yes. My apologies. Why is it hidden from students? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why is this thing hidden from students? Visible to students. My apologies. Try it again. Refresh. Did it come up? So it, now it should be visible to students. Sorry, it was hidden for some reason. It, is it up now? But again, but if you go to subject, uh, if you go to Seneca, uh, sorry, OOP244 GitHub organization, that's the place, place to see everything. So when you click over here, it takes you to the whole organization. My notes, are, so these are all the notes from semesters ago. Take a look. Like if I go, for example, to 2214, you will see over there, these are the ones, and these are all the recordings for all the things that we have done in class. So everything is in there. All the notes that were written, so section NAA, these were the, this was the note that we did at the time, you see? And you click on it, you can see exactly what the notes are. Everything's on, the, on GitHub uh, since I've done it forever, a long time ago, okay? So that's how it's gonna be. Uh, uh, so again, uh, go through this, okay? Please go through every single thing, click on it and see what it says. It's important for you to know. I don't want to go through it for, for you now. Do it at home uh, and uh, make sure you see everything and you read everything uh, carefully. Subject addendum supersedes everything. What does it mean? It means if you go to the course outline and the course outline says the uh, 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 final test is 50%, this overrides it. Remember, an addendum by definition means something that is added to what you had before. So that supersedes everything. So make sure you actually uh, look at that. All right. These things you don't see, midterm, final stuff you don't see, quizzes. The only thing that you will see today will be quiz zero that I'm going to open. Yes. Yes, my dear. Let me come to you. That's, that's the lab. That's, I, I should actually hide it completely. Uh, although, thank you actually for letting me know. Although you, have, uh, if, uh, although you have two things over there, one is OP244ZAA and OP244ZAAL, the L means nothing. Just hide it. You can actually click on it and hide it so you don't see it because it's absolutely useless. It's the system. Because we have two, two separate types of teaching, it assigns two courses for it. You go figure. I don't know why. Be because I cannot post your marks in two different places. <laughs> it's one place. So just hide the L, please. Thank you very much for asking. Pardon me? Of course it is, because I haven't opened anything yet, my dear. <laughs> yes, uh, quizzes are all hidden. OK, so all right. Uh, uh, I think I, think, uh, I kind of uh, covered everything quite quickly. Now, any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Any question one? Any question two? Sold. All right, so that's how we're going to do it. And um, 
as usual, when I start the session, for first few times, I actually do this in front of you, and then I'll prepare it, and I come to class when it's ready, which means this. I start with Visual Studio, as you see. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, Workshop Zero, it's due in, what, five days? In 12th, right? So please, make sure you have it. One more thing I have to mention. Uh, good thing I remembered it. Computer science is an exact science. It's not like psychology that you can fiddle around with and have your own opinion about it, how to present it. Okay? You don't have a choice. You cannot say, I'm not going to write a for loop. I'm going to write a fur loop. You can't do that. Okay? I'm not going to end this statement with a semicolon. I like to put a dot. You can't do that. It's an exact science, which means if I told you two spaces, new line, and a dash, it must be two spaces, new line, and a dash, and nothing else. Do we understand this? OK. So when you submit your workshop, when I tell you git ignore must have these things, when I tell you the readme file must have these information, it must have those information exactly how I ask you to do so. And that stands for the rest of the semester. It's not a taste matter. It's not, it's not a democracy. It's not. Computer science is not. You're going to have a system analyst. It's going to give you a process to do, says this is the function, this is the thing you are supposed to design that have these specifications. If you don't follow the exact rule, your program is not going to plug in into an entire system. It's worth nothing. You must follow the rules exactly until you become a system analyst. Then your word goes and everybody has to follow. If the person at the top cannot decide how to fit the pieces of the puzzle together, nothing's going to work. Sometimes that person is not a person. It's a team of designers. They sit together, they come up with a strategy, and they give it to you. As a matter of fact, when you get hired in a big company, not in startup like the three people are there, but like you go and like get hired in, I don't know, uh, Mozilla, or you get hired in Google or something like that, they give you a 3,000-page document, and that's just how to code and how to name your variables. OK? And I'm not joking. When you are committing something to a code, and this is real, and I'm not joking at all, uh, who knows what is open source? What does it mean, open source? Seriously? And that can contribute. Thank you very much. Your name? Ali. Ali, my hero today. OK? so. Open source is essentially any project that its source code is open and everybody can contribute to it. Anybody knows one of them? Okay. Holy mother, it's like mentioned 50 of them. Which one is the biggest one? The biggest open source project in the world is Linux. The Linux operating system is open source. Why do you think that's the only operating system that doesn't have any viruses in it? Because those people who write the virus wrote the operating system. <laughs> you follow? And because all planet Earth is eyeballing it, nobody can find the hole. As soon as a hole is found, an issue is opened, fixed immediately. Because five million people are looking at the code. And if anything's wrong, everybody will know it. Now, you are a programmer, and you write the code that makes Linux system AI so it can jump down off your computer and dance. And you want to commit that to the Linux community to merge it into the Linux operating system. They look at your code. They see you didn't start your variables with an underline because that was the rule. They say, no, best code ever, garbage to us because you did not follow the guidelines or rules of the thing. Computer science is exact. That was the whole point of the thing. And I talked for 15 minutes to beg you to please, when I tell you to create a class called employee, you cannot create a class called student say, oh, it's a class, it works. OK, you can't do that. OK, thank you. All right. All right.
Next thing we're going to do is uh, starting. So we're going to say new project. After we do new project, I'm going to create an empty project. Where do I create an empty project? In the clone of the repository I have on Matrix. So that OOP244 NAAZAA notes, I have a clone repository. Uh, uh, talking stick, what is a clone? A clone. Bus. What is a clone? A copy. A copy, an exact copy of something else, right? Cloning means you create a replica, of, not a replica, exact same thing. That's how Git works. By the way, Git is the next huge up open source operating system. Linus Torvald, the genius guy with the brain that was wired, that he created Linux. And when he created Linux, he created Linux in his basement on a computer. Okay, as easy as that. And then made it open source and it became this. Then so many contribution happened, they could not manage it anymore. So that genius brain created Git. Git that you see is made by Linus Torvald. That created Linux. So the code you are writing can be supervised and can be versioned and can have history of everything. So essentially, anything you add to your Git repository, it's being watched for every single modification. And you can always go back to your committed commitments to that thing, uh, the uh, commits that you do to the repository, you can always go back to the history. And, I, and you can always see what happened when. I'll show you later on. But anyways, so I'm going to go over there. In that clone repository, I'm going to go in here in section ZAA, select the folder, and create the project over there that is 01 September 07. That's the name of my project. Always check this checkbox when you are creating it. Why? Because Visual C++ works like a solution and with many projects in a solution. We are in a kindergarten. So we don't have a solution with 50 projects. Our solution is our project. So you check this, it makes them one. Okay? So always check so you don't have another one. Okay? And then you create. I create it. Three years later, it gets created. And in here, I'm going to go add new item. Please, please, please go back and watch the video that I posted for OOP 244 NAA. The, everything that we need to talk about this semester about, I know it's boring because internet went bad and I had to, uh, I know, keep going and uh, put it on high speed and as soon as you see we are talking about object orientation, slow it down and listen to it. I am explaining exactly what we are going to learn this semester, okay? So it's there. The promise we make, I made, and the promise you're going to make and how we're going to go through everything, it's in there. Please go. I know it's boring. It's an hour and a half of boresome, but please, I beg you, go through that boring thing and listen to it just this once, okay? Anyways, so now I'm going to create a, a C++ file over here. I'm going to call it prg.cpp. And in here, I'm going to say include IO stream, no header file, no dot H's in C++ anymore uh, because it's object oriented and we don't have any dot H's for whatever reason. Forget about it. Just, just know that there is no dot H's. If you want to use any header files from C language, like if I want to in include, for example, standard library, standard library is from C language, you have to say include CSTDLIB instead of STDLIB.h. Instead of this, you go C. You start it with C. It means this header file is coming from C language. Okay? Just remember that. I don't want it. Just I'm going to write over here how to include C header files. Then after this, you're going to say namespace uh, using namespace. Sure. And um, for those people who have, uh, with all respect, for those people who cannot see from far, come closer because I need, it's, I'm not, 
you're perfectly good that told me to make it bigger but what I'm saying is that because I need lots of real estate when it becomes difficult those people who cannot see perfectly please sit on front those people who see perfectly go to the back <laughs> so so kind of solve my problems with the thing so um, now I'm gonna test it with you like eye doctors over there is this good is this good bigger this is good okay all right so using namespace std uh, why what is a namespace <coughs> in in an object-oriented world because the programs got big and we had many de departments working on different aspects of the same thing for example in seneca if you want to create a structure for a student a structure for a student with respect to food court is their credit in their one card they don't care of what subjects did you get to get a hamburger right so that's the student they create. You have a name, maybe a student number, and your balance. If you go to OSAP department, a structure for a student has a student number, name, your balance in a bank, and how much OSAP you received, uh, or whatever. You know what OSAP is, right? O o OSAP is Ontario Student Loan. Yeah, anyways. Uh, or if you are in registration, they don't care about those things. They care about, did you pass the subjects to go to next semester? So three different structure for students. Now, each department has its own programming team, analysts and everything. They have three structures called students. They put the program together, three structures with the same name, program fails. So what did they do? They introduced namespaces. They said each department will work in their own namespace. So the food court will create a namespace called food and creates everything in there. The OSAP department creates a namespace called loan. So it's loan namespace. The registration creates a namespace called reg. So now food scope resolution student becomes the student for food court. Loan scope resolution student becomes the student for loan. Reg scope resolution student becomes the student. Therefore, no conflict between names. That's why they call it namespaces. So each department can work in its own namespace scope. But after they created that, said, what the heck? Now what are we doing? What, what can we do with all the libraries already existed in the language? What namespaces that should fall in? We're going to create a namespace called standard, STD, and put everything that existed in C++ in it. And because I'm using it every single time, I'm saying using namespace STD so the compiler knows I don't have to keep saying STD this, STD that, STD. I'm not, I don't want to do that. Right? So I said using namespace std so uh, I don't have to keep repeating myself. Um, that's what it is, okay? And we'll go through the details later on as we go through it. So now in here I'm going to say int main, no more void inside the schmiggly dinghy. You don't put void in there, okay? Return zero, C out, so I'm saying C out is an object, this console output object. Okay, I am inserting into console output, hello, OOP244ZAA. And I insert a new line, an end of line. Insert hello, then insert end of line. What's going to be the output? Control F5, execute. Three years later, it compiles, runs, and you'll see that. Hello, P244, and it goes to new line. Welcome to first C++ program you have written. As you see, it's exactly like C. It doesn't make any difference. But, of course, you, we don't want to do it. Everything that you have learned in C works over there, too. And hello again. Of course, printf is not going to work. Printf works. Okay, hello again and backslash n. Ta-da! So your C stuff still works. Your C knowledge is not down the drain, but you're not allowed to use printf because we're going to learn new stuff, okay? Well, like if we are doing file access stuff because you don't know how file access is working, works in C, C++, you can use uh, include standard input output and open a file like you did in RPC 144, right? But it's, uh, again, you don't uh, make the, don't, um, yeah, 
Uh, although the compiler is not going to get confused, but don't confuse me by using standard output for your printouts when we learn how to do it with uh, things. So, and then after I do this, I save this program. And what I do, I'll go to that repository that I cloned, OP244, that I cloned in here. This is the one. You see that? Oh, no, that's last semester. Where is this semester? 2237. I haven't organized this uh, notebook yet. There you go. So that's the repository that I cloned, right? So I simply right click over here and I add everything that I just added. It adds only what is needed. Why is that? Why it didn't add so much garbage that I have in here? Just take a look. I have this, I have x64, I have debug, I have lots of garbage in there. Why didn't it add all those and it was smart enough to only add the file and the project file that I need to open. Why? Because I said so in git ignore. If you look at git ignore, it's a long list of things that are not supposed to be pushed into a repository when added. That's why I say make sure your git ignore is updated. If you don't use the git ignore that I give you, then you're going to have garbage, lots of binary garbage nonsense on GitHub. And when I want to pull the information on my computer so I can help you, it's going to take 15 minutes to get the garbage I don't need and you don't need. So make sure your git ignore is always updated. <clears throat> it is a beautiful thing. You can do the exact same thing on Matrix and clone your repository on Matrix so you don't use FTP anymore. You do your work, you push to Git, you go on matrix, you pull, poof. It brings only what's necessary. You don't, you don't have to select, it has to be binary, no, this has to be text. I have to, you don't do that. You just push and pull. And everything's done perfectly. Anyways, I was adding, <clears throat> so I'm gonna add and I'm gonna click OK. So it adds, as soon as it adds, it says, you wanna commit? Commit means <clears throat> give me a turning point on this computer where I can come back to. Okay, so I'm going to commit, and I'm going to name that commit uh, first C++ program. And I'm going to click on commit. Now it is committed to my clone, to my computer over here. I want it to go to GitHub so you can see it. What do I do? You see it immediately gives me the next step. Push. Push is a fancy word for upload, an intelligent upload. And I'm gonna click on push, and I'm gonna click on okay, and done. If you go to the Git repository, you're gonna see that file over there right now. So if we actually go to our repository where I mentioned where it is, course information, if I go to the organization, and I go to the OOP244 NAA notes, you will see that the latest thing that is committed in here is, first C++ program. You see that? You open it up. You will see that there is a September yada yada yada. You open that up. You click on prg.cpp. There's my code. Okay? So everything I do will go up there. You don't need to copy it. You don't need to do anything. And when you do your workshop zero, you will have the same thing for all your OOP244 work. And if I were you, I would create a repository for why all the other Seneca work. So you don't have to tag along that stupid memory stick with you or your computer for all that matters. You just come over here on any computer, you pull your stuff, you do the work, you push, you delete, you go home, you have everything at home. Not only that, go back home, you pull it from Git, whatever home is. Okay? Maybe it's right in Toronto, right here. You're not, <laughs> but I don't know. Wherever you're going back to. Anyways, wherever you call home. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> uh, we'll go, and I'm going to do this so many times you'll see it. And because I'm using a graphical user interface, a GUI interface, all these things are actually put together. Uh, I'll explain to you later. But essentially, that's what I teach, how I teach, and that is that. Any questions down to this point? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, in that one I tell you exactly how to do it with Mac. So it's, it doesn't matter. I can do it ex because Git is Git. I can actually open the uh, I can open the command line over here. Let me just go through it so I see where the command line is. I'm going to go over here, open in File Explorer. So this is where I have everything. I copy. So now in here, I'm going to say C out added another line. OK? And I'm going to go to new line. And I save it. And I run it. And I see everything is good. OK? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a command line. and uh, go to drive D and go CD. That's where the thing is. So this is, this is, well, uh, this is where I have everything, right? So in here I can say git uh, add star, add everything. So essentially I did the add. Then I'm going to say, oh, sorry. Then I'm going to say git, sorry, it's, my prompt is so long over there. Git commit dash m uh, added a line. Right? Then I'm going to say git push. And are you sure you want to continue? Yes, because it's the first time I used it. It actually uh, registered the key, the key and everything. So it actually went over there. Now if I go back, that, that was Mac. That was not Mac. That was any computer. <laughs> okay? That graphical user interface essentially issues these things behind the scene. There is no magic happening over there. So now if I go back to the organization one more time and I refresh it, you will see that you will see that in ZAA uh, what happened? Did I? Oh, I don't have it. I have it. I didn't set the key the way I mentioned. It. So, so yeah, so remember I told you I, I didn't do that over here. I only did it for, yeah. So the S, if, if I installed the SSH key, I would have done this like this and I did, because that's why it didn't go through. So I, uh, and um, all I need to do is actually push over here because it's already added. So uh, the pushing that needs to go to the other one, I can do it from here. So I can actually say tortoise git push. And this one had a key, and <laughs> now it's up there. So everything worked other than push because I didn't create the key. Uh, but everything is in there. You, in Workshop Zero, everything is in there. If you are having a Linux flavor, and if you are using Ubuntu, if you're using Fedora, if you're using anything Linux, command line works, you can do it that way. There is no problem. All right. Permission denied. Could not read from remote repository. Uh, I know what happened. I deleted my keys for demonstration, and the key that I have over here doesn't match the key over there, so, so it doesn't. But it doesn't matter. Not important. All right, so are we good? Oh, and by the way, um, now if you go over here, this is another thing that I have to show you. So if I do this, you will see over here it says added a line. If you click, you see over here it says added a line. If I click over here, it shows me the program. But if I go back over here and click on Add the Line, it shows the difference between the two. This is what it was. This is it. This is what is new. You will see a line is added. That's how I help you with your work. So when you have problem with your workshop, you create a commit. You push it to the repo. You book an appointment with me. Give me the path to your repository. I see the path, I pull it, I contact you. We call, I open up your work, I fix your code, I push it, you pull it, you do a diff, you see exactly what has changed. Then you reflect on it. That's the price you have to pay. I fix your code, you tell me what I did to fix your code. And we are good to go. Got it? All right. The class ends at? So let's see how we are actually doing the, uh, the quiz. So I'm going to do it on a practice test just to show you how it works, and then we're going to go 
Uh, you can actually start with me. Go on your computers, on your Seneca computers. Find my apps over there. Okay? That's the very first thing you do any time and every time you are doing the thing. First of all, this is what I'm going to... Because if you don't do it gen uh, honestly today, you're shitting yourself in a foot. Okay? So... <laughs> Don't try to. So the, uh, the, the next, the, the other days that I'm going to come and we're going to do this, I put baskets at the table and all cell phones goes to it. So all the cell phones are going to go to the baskets. Then I count the cell phone with the number of people in the row. So I know I have all the cell phones. And don't tell me I don't have a cell phone. Yeah. So I trust the students a little too much. And that's, uh, I, I paid for it dearly. So <laughs> now I do this. So. So the very first thing you do, you open my apps. So do it with me. And please, everybody has a computer set? OK? You didn't log in, did you? <laughs> did you log in? <laughs> You're logged in. Oh, lo oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bad girl you are. OK. <clears throat> please, please go to my apps. And go to when you go to my apps, let me, let me go to it. Log in. It's going to validate you. Because you logged in, you're going to be validated. Three years later, when it validates you, go in search apps over here and type Notepad. You will see that googly eye thing is going to come up. You see that? Launch it. Launch Notepad++. It's going to launch it, but it goes behind the scene. So you open it up. OK, let me just close this because I had the, the, the previous one. You're going to see something like this. OK? So Notepad++ Notepad++ opens with a new thingy. OK? How are you doing, dear? Oh, yeah. Click, click over here. Ah, here, OK? And open link. All right. No problem. Now type over here Notepad. It didn't click. One more time. Oh, you went out. <laughs> click on it. That, that notepad. There you go. Googly eye, launch. OK? Do we have a, anyone who ha doesn't have Notepad++ open? This is critical, because that's what you're going to write your program. Make it smaller. You don't need it that big. <laughs> it's like everywhere. OK, that should be at right side of your screen, exactly like mine. Remember exact science? OK? <coughs> at right side. Is that Notepad? Big enough for you, my friend. <laughs> Make it small. Bring it at right. OK. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I scream a little too much. All right. So after you do this, you are ready to go to your test. OK? So now go to your school website. Where is my school website? So I'm going to go to my school website and go to OP244. This is what you do when you are doing your tests of any type, OP244ZAA, and open up practice test. OK? And you can bring this one at left and set it nicely so it goes right with the other one. Now at right side, you have your uh, Notepad++, and at left side, you have this one. Rename this thing to whatever.cpp. That new that you see, go file, save as, and anywhere, it doesn't matter. Call it, I don't know, whatever.cpp. Yeah, as long as it has an extension CPP. That gives you syntax highlighting and limited IntelliSense, so you don't do spelling mistakes and stuff. So when you actually do something, it helps you writing the code. OK? What are you doing here? Do it on once for now. Why? You don't need, you don't need, you know, we don't. <laughs> okay, so I just mentioned you have one processor and there's two over there. Anyways, so, so uh, um, anybody over here who did not open the test, practice test, and didn't rename? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. So, so you're good, you're good. You have that? It's CPP. So, so you have the files named CPP, you have the practice test open, right? All right. All right. So what you do, 
And uh, one thing that I forgot to do is that I actually actually have to log in as a student, otherwise I don't see it properly. So let me make this right. So, uh, so I'm going to say student preview. So, I, so we, we all see it. Uh, I see it exactly as you do. There we go. OK, so that's better. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go on uh, practice test. OK, so now start the attempt. OK, I say first watch this video. Don't. I am the video. You don't need to watch it. OK, you can watch it at home if you want to. It's exactly telling you what I'm telling you now. OK, so the question over here for this test is, uh, I'm, I'm going to reduce the, the font size. You have it in front of you. I don't, you don't need to see it. It says, using the method explained above, submit the properly indented and syntax highlighted version of the following function. I gave you a function, and I told you, just copy it, format it, and give it back to me. So copy it, paste it in the Notepad++, you will see extra steps coming in, extra lines. I see that, I don't mark it. No extra lines, OK? And you will not have extra lines because you actually do your program in here. You never copy anything from anywhere. And if you copy, I will know if you have extra spaces. OK? So, <clears throat> so remove all the spaces. And start indenting. So this goes one forward. This goes one forward. This goes two forward. This goes three forward. This goes four forward, four, four, and this is closing, so it goes three, two, one, and it's formatted. Now I have a properly formatted sort function. Is it a sort function? Yeah, sort function. Are we good? OK, after doing that, now this is the key moment of your life, OK? Please. Look at this. <clears throat> now, let's assume it was a program. I didn't ask you to copy anything. I asked you to write the code for me, which you're going to do in two minutes. OK? So you wrote the code over here. You copy this. <clears throat> copy. You click Use Editor to format your answer. You click on these three schmiggly dinghies over here, as you see. Let me make it bigger. You click on these three. You select Code Snippet. It opens up a little thing for you. You paste it in there and nowhere else. And as you see, it will be syntax highlighted, perfectly formatted. Then you submit that for me. And done. That's how you do it. OK? One more time. That's why I gave you unlimited attempts so you can do it at home. <clears throat> so again, you start the attempt. You write the code that you're supposed to answer. And as soon as you complete, you always do copy, you paste. You copy, you paste. You copy. So if I want to do it, so if I write only this part, I do it like this. I paste. OK. When I'm, I see that, oh, um, now I'm, it's halfway through the test. Then I'll do it again, copy again, and paste it again. Control A and Control V. So you keep doing that over and over. Why? Because I don't accept that you tell me, oh my god, I wrote the whole answer, and the test time was over, and I didn't submit anything. Actually, a minute or two before it's time, I say, copy everything now, or you're going to lose it. So you have to copy. Okay? If you write something like this, Every single dot and space and curly bracket will get you partial marks. OK? If you submit the best code in the world, 
that solves world hunger. Like this, you get zero. All I'm asking you to give me something so I can mark it. Yes, sir. What are you talking about? Here? Okay. I'm gonna, f I'm gonna fall on your. <laughs> My friend. I just want to be sure, so I don't lose any marks. I want some organized code. I don't want. I'm not a narcissistic <laughs> psychopath. Okay. <laughs> no. Whatever you see in here is perfect. This is perfect. All right. All right. All right. And then you submit and you're fine. Anybody have any problem with this? Are we good? Do we understand how to do it? How to do it? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see. If you ask me curly bracket thing, I'm going to kill you. This is perfect. No, I mean, it's not automated. So, like. When you are writing it, it will be automatic. The reason that it wasn't, okay, <clears throat> the question was, I had to format it. Isn't it automatic? Because it takes time for me to format. When you're actually writing the code, it will actually format it for you. When you hit it, it automatically indents it. When you close it, it automatically goes back. It's like Visual Studio. But when you code it yourself, when you copy it, no, it won't do it. Got it? All right. Yes. What's the reason behind it? <clears throat> okay. What's the reason behind it? We don't have time for reason behind it. Can I explain what's reason behind it the next day you're coming in? Okay. No, we don't have 30 minutes. Oh, oh sorry. So I can explain what's going on. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to walk 20 steps. Can you do that, you think, if I ask you? I want, that's my challenge. Can you walk 20 steps for me? If I ask you to walk 20 steps for me, but each step must be unequal with the other one, can you do that? You have to go. You know what happens? If I ask you to walk a kilometer like that, you're going to die. Because you are not using your muscle memory, you have to think. When you are looking at code, you don't know. Your eyes have muscles. It uses muscle memory. When you look at a code and it's intent indented, it automatically jumps to the next one. So I don't die after marking 50 <laughs> things. Not only that, you're not going to die tomorrow when you write 9,000 lines of code and have to debug, it, debug that freaking memory leak. I am helping you, and you have no idea. You will need glasses this thick if you don't do this right now. I, I Is that, does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, if you, <laughs> oh, my God. Reasonable spaces, I understand. You have one function. You want to separate it from other function. You put three spaces. That I understand. I thank you for that. But if you write 10 lines of code, and each line has three spaces with the next one, that means you copied it from her. Does that make sense? Thank you. What I mean is that make your code make sense. That's all I'm asking. You will see. I'm not going to be that. Painful. You're going to believe me. You see my marking, you'll be happy. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to make the quiz available so you can start now. Leave your notepads on. Delete that thing so you have a clean thing to start with. Okay? You have 25 minutes for that. It's 
Yeah, that's exactly what we need. In 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you, hey, people, uh, uh, <coughs> okay, where is it? Quizzes. So in quizzes, quiz zero is now visible to students, and you can start now. Answer it to the best of your ability, and you're just losing time. I'm sure I can do it. Okay. Today it's fine. Yeah. You're not allowed to do it from your computer because you have all the files in the world on your computer. Yeah. I want a blank thing. Yeah, yeah, I want sure, you to have sure, no sure. access to anything. Okay, next time. Next time, yes. You are not allowed to do it from your own computer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask you to turn off your computers when the time comes. Okay? So. Start doing the quiz, please. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll pause.